Hey there, it's Rachel Mullins, the host of Hashtag No Filter Fridays on Public House Media. Hello, 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 Choose to Rise friends. I am so grateful you're back with me today here on the show. Welcome to Friday um, or whatever day you're listening to this. Um, I appreciate you coming back here. I also appreciate you telling your friends about Choose to Rise. It has been a lot of fun lately to hear from newer listeners. Uh, It's really easy to do that. You just shoot me a message at KJPMEYER on Instagram or Facebook um, and just tell me what you love about the show or just telling other people about it. It's a lot of fun to see um, friends of the show or just listeners of the show screenshot it and put it on their social media telling other people it's even more fun when they tag me because then I get to see it um, and and chat with you about what you loved about the show and it's just been so good Um, I very much appreciate you and um, I just wanted to make sure I pass that along today as we talk about building relationships and especially maintaining and developing relationships during this crazy pandemic right so we may or may not be like completely holed up at home anymore. Um, the world has released a little bit um, with the vaccine out and all those things. And so I'm kind of dating this podcast in a sense, but um, I really think it's important that we talk about how to have healthy relationships when you're home 24 um, seven. I know that my husband's a teacher. My kids um, are both school age. And so like when it's a snow day, like it happens to be today for us, um, it's just turned into virtual learning day and business goes on as normal um, or semi-normal, I guess you could say uh, with the, everything that's been going on. So they're just home a lot more and you don't have always those release times, um, that quiet time, if you need it, um, or you just are kind of thrown together. And so I wanted to share some tips and some strategies of how to kind of keep those main these relationships going. And then um, just kind of how you work through these things together. So a lot of times, you know, these kinds of conversations happen with uh, middle-aged couples um, when their children get to college and they kind of move out of the house, kind of get the empty nester syndrome. That's usually when we see these kinds of issues coming up is because like your lives have become so much about what's going on with the kids or running from this activity to that activity. And then when they're gone, when they've moved out of the house or they're, it's, it's quiet, you know, you're just left with your, your spouse, you're left with your significant other. And um, you know, sometimes you get lost in the shuffle and it's kind of, it's hard to remember sometimes how and why you fell in love with that person when all sometimes you see are some of their faults. So today I, I want to make sure that we overcome those struggles before they become a problem. Um, and I want to make sure that you may be facing, you know, some of those things right now <laughs> with kids under tow because everyone's home all the time. And so with us spending so much time at home due to the pandemic and, you know, having all of these, you know, everything canceled um, under the sun, it seems like a perfect time to learn how to have a healthy relationship with those you love, even when you're with them, it seems like 24 seven, and it may not be that bad, but it's, you know, we been there, right? So multiple people working at home, multiple people doing a learning from home, um, doing social distancing under the same roof can really kind of sometimes put a strain on any sort of relationship. But by practicing these three C's that I'm going to share with you today and how to have a healthy relationship, compromise, commitment, and communication, your connection could be stronger than ever. And I know that I've been trying to use these more in my own relationship with my husband, with my kids as well, and it's been helping a lot. So I wanted to share these strategies with you and um, help you make sure that you're living a healthier life with your relationships and not just your physical being. So the first one I have for you is to be honest, right? Being clear about what you need is important. Clarity brings um, competency. It's a a phrase that we used to use at school and clarity brings competency means clarity is going to not only help you Um, get your needs met, but it's also going to help your partner help meet those needs. So while one person in a relationship might need a lot of alone time, like myself, another might need together time like my husband, right? And so communicating those needs is really crucial for a healthy romantic and platonic relationship. So making sure the other person's needs are met, kind of that um, give up yourself to, to serve the other, just making sure you have clarity. You know, if one, uh, you know, disappointment, 
the definition of disappointment is unmet expectations. If you expect, you know, to have together time and family dinners and um, all the things all the time, like I know when we the first started the pandemic a, a year ago, at least um, we were in the point where I was like, we're going to do church every Sunday morning and we're all going to sit together just like we would at church. And we are going to watch the service together and we're going to sing. It just didn't work. And it was unrealistic expectations for my children even at eight and 11 to sit and watch a TV screen, much like they would be sitting in church. Like the expectations in the environment are just completely different, but I had to one come to terms about what my needs were, but also what their needs were and really kind of come together with what expectations and what things we wanted to be. I had to be honest with them and they needed to be honest with me. And I just need to be honest with myself about what was really needed. So make room for each person's needs. And uh, it might be tough to start with, but you know, getting it out there and just expressing it in a safe space in a safe way, um, you're both going to feel better in the long run. The second part really goes along with that is number two is listen to each other. Now more than ever, listening to the people we live with, it can help maintain a healthy relationship. You know, this pandemic has brought on so many issues for everyone individually and collectively and spending time talking about those things can really release the hold that they have on you. So when you discuss your fears and you discuss your emotions, you can also include sadness and anxiety, grief, confusion, and even gratitude and joy. Don't feel guilty about feeling good. Don't feel good, but guilty about having gratitude and things and and finding the good in situations. In fact, I want you to do so, but it's also really good for you to explain how you're feeling and just express those feelings because anytime we bottle those things up and we keep them to ourselves, we let them eat holes inside of us. So talk to your significant other, um, have conversations about how you're feeling and it will bring you both closer together, um, as well as help you understand each other. So It can help remind you both what truly matters at the heart of your relationship and really help you pay attention to what um, helps you um, and and vice versa, right? So the third step I have for you is take breaks. (laughs) Yes, breaks are sometimes overlooked, but they're a crucial element of a healthy relationship. They can come in many forms like break from the news, break from your home if possible, you know, get out. If right now it's sub zero temperatures, um, super, super cold right here right now. So it's not so easy to get outside, but, um, maybe it's, you know, in the, whatever time of year it might be for you get outside. If you can break apart, find some quiet time, find some unplugged time. Um, even if you and your partner or roommate, um, formulate a, a me time section, right? So like my me time is right away in the morning, that quiet time in the house when no one else is awake. Um, my husband earlier today took a bath because he needed, he grabbed a book, he put some Epsom salts and some hot water in a bath and just kind of chilled and relaxed in there for a while. Um, and that was his time. And that was okay. We need to be able to take breaks um, from each other and from the life and just kind of unplug, you know, getting outside and breathing some of that fresh air. Um, it might be something that really helps you. Um, it might be also just kind of having some silent breaks in the house where you all unplug from your devices and you get out books, um, turn off the TVs, turn off the radios, turn off the Alexa, whatever it might be, and really just get quiet. Um, being quiet together can be really powerful too. And when we tend to fill up all of those space with words, just sitting together while each person reads over a cup of coffee or um, whatever can really kind of build the healthy relationship as well. So taking breaks from each other, but taking breaks from life um, is really helpful and really will help keep your mindset in a better place as well. The fourth strategy I have for you is to acknowledge things are tough, right? So like sweeping it under the rug all the time or keeping those rose colored glasses on doesn't really always help anyone. So even when you find a me time and an us time, balance that with what works for you. So um, we need to recognize and accept the changes that are caused by this pandemic. Not everything's going to go back to normal. And we have to also understand that things are not the same. And so being at home and together so much can be a huge adjustment for a lot of people. And so really remember that it's okay to both cherish the time together as well as needing your own personal space right now really matters. And it doesn't have to be one or the other. It can be a beautiful blend of both of them. But in other words, you can really love someone and still struggle being around them 24 seven. I know that this past weekend we went to a basketball tournament and just in my own space, I I'm very used to having some, some me time, some quiet time. Right. And this whole weekend I was in a car. It felt like with my children and my husband, so we drove two and a half on Friday, we drove two and a half hours to a doctor's appointment. 
And we were there for about 30, 45 minutes. And then we got back in the car and drove home. <laughs> and then on Saturday, we drove for two hours to a basketball tournament. We were at the tournament all day. And then we drove two hours home. It was really just kind of a lot. And then Sunday, we did it again. <laughs> we got, in the mor- got up in the morning super early and got in the car and, and left and did the basketball tournament at the little shopping and came home. And so it was just a lot of time crouped up together in a little bit of space. And we all started just to get on each other's nerves and we all needed to just kind of separate and spread apart, but it was okay to acknowledge that things are tough. And it was really important for me to communicate. I just can't right now. (laughs) And just to be quiet and to just even just, I even said those words, I just can't right now. Uh, And so it's just like, don't talk to me. I just want to get these last 30 minutes to home and then freedom. Right. But like, it was important that I expressed my needs and my feelings. And so we didn't just have a huge blow up in the car that would have been bad. The fifth step I have for you is to make plans, right? A silver lining for the pandemic is a chance to spend quality time with your partners or your roommates or your family, right? That you otherwise wouldn't have. It's kind of really forced us to slow down, but we likely never have this much time together again. So it's, Let's use the time to really get to know our partners and learn more about them. One way you can do so is to explore mutual interests, such as a good TV show or series, learning a new skill together, or playing a game that you both enjoy. I know that my um, sister-in-law and brother-in-law have really instilled game nights and card nights into their family. Um, They are constantly talking about which board game they did or like a Scrabble night um, and making up fun words and like those kinds of things. So it's really just a way for you to kind of get to know each other and really get connected again in certain ways. You could also start some self-care habits together. Your home together, you're the perfect accountability partners, start a new workout program from home, um, work on some shared nutrition goals, get extra motivation from each other because your accountability buddy isn't leaving. Right. And so stay together and work through some of those things. Another fun idea is to um, have date nights at home. And, you know, sometimes that like date night feeling can be kind of, you know, not so fun when it's like sweatpants and, you know, on the couch, but like, really you could make it fun. And my, I, my other friend, um, uh, she, Emily's, uh, she is doing fancy Fridays. And so, uh, her, her mother actually is doing this. And so she makes a fancy dinner. They get dressed up. Um, they've invited Emily and her family over a couple of times. And it's just a matter of like getting, making it a date night kind of thing at your home. So, um, they cook a fancy dinner, they put out the fancy silverware and dishes, and they have a fun family, um, fancy dinner kind of night. And it's just, it's a memory that I know their kids are going to love forever. And so that's just an idea too. And so strategies number six is to um, have fun, right? Strong relationships need to be cultivated and to have the ability to laugh and to, you know, not worry about our imperfections and not take ourselves too seriously. So you can really practice getting to a place where you and your partner or your, you and your roommate or you and your kids can look back at what you previously believed was a stressful or upsetting situation and laugh about the experience together because laughter is definitely some of the best medicine out there. And laughter can lead to learning, which can also lead to healing and bonding and which could also make your relationships at homes that much more special. So I hope today that you have taken away some of these strategies, or you've got some new ideas into strengthening your relationships that you're having at home, having more fun, making some fun and interesting plans. Even if you're not going anywhere, acknowledging the tough things, taking breaks from each other when needed, really listening to each other, communicating your honest emotions and thoughts and expectations, and really just having, building those healthy relationships, even when you're home 24 seven, it feels like, or even just home more often than usual. So thanks for joining me today. Again, if you like the show or you found it valuable, please send it off to somebody who else you might need to hear it. Um, share it on your social media and tag me K J P M E Y E R. And, uh, let me know that what you loved about it. And then if you feel so compelled to leave a rating and review that really helps more people find us, um, and be connected. And I'm really, um, going to be working on a course soon. And I would love to know what kinds of things that you would like to know more about, um, and really just kind of getting your feedback. So if you would shoot me an email at choose to rise up at gmail.com with some ideas or some strategies or things that you would like to be interested in um, learning more about, or that you would want a course on, I would be so thrilled. Um, I've been gathering some data and asking lots of questions of people for a while. And um, I really think it's really close to being um, something special. So I hope you um, have a great day and a great week, and I will see you back here again next week. Have a great one, everyone. 